I asked you guys if you were interested in a video about reviving my old computer to turn it into some kind of music production workstation. And since there seems to be interest in it, here's the video. I'm not a producer. What's good fellow musician, welcome back to another producer's channel. In the first part of this video, I only focus on my computer. So the specs, Windows installation and how it handles larger projects right now. Except for the case, the main parts of this PC build are about five years old and I decided not to buy any new stuff. But I looked up their prices and I put together a PC build of, in my opinion, the best parts that you can get for the same amount of money nowadays. If you're just looking for the PC build, you could jump to this timestamp, but I also have some helpful tips in the first part and I would recommend you to watch it too. As you can see, the case is not the latest one, but what really counts are the inner values, right? So I had a look inside and the first thing I saw was the B85 Pro Gamer by ASUS, which has two USB 3 ports, but I had to replace this battery here. Under the heatsink is an Intel Core i5 4670K and next to it are two 8GB DDR3 memory sticks. Furthermore, the PC has got a 256GB SSD plus a 2TB HDD and it is powered by a Seasonic SS600ET. The professionals among you probably already noticed that I put an unlocked Intel Core i5 on a motherboard which is not suitable for overclocking. This just shows how clueless I was back then. After I put everything back together, let's continue with the software part. To make sure I'm not losing any important data, I created a backup of my SSD with the help of Macroom Reflect, which is free for personal use. You can also use it for regular backups of your hard drive or special folders like your project files, for example. So if you're interested, I will leave a link in the description below. Next, I downloaded the Windows Media Creation Tool to create a boot medium on my USB stick. While the boot medium was being created, I looked up my Windows license key with the help of ShowKey Plus. I think if you have an OEM key on your motherboard, it's not really necessary, but it doesn't hurt you if you know your Windows license key. Once the media creation tool was finished, I had to change the boot priority in the BIOS, reboot my computer, and the Windows installation started automatically. The first program I installed was OBS, but only so you could watch me downloading ONO Shut Up 10. If you are a Windows 10 user, I highly recommend you check out this portable application because it allows you to deactivate some unnecessary Windows features with only one click. Of course, you can also go through all the settings separately. And if you do not know what a setting is about, you can click on it and a small description will pop up. Besides these settings, I also went into the sound settings and deactivated all Windows sounds. Afterwards, I installed Cubase and I somehow wanted to measure the performance of my computer and I found this website where you can download a benchmark project for Reaper and Cubase. So here are some results. Feel free to check it out yourself and let me know in the comments below what your computer is capable of. I also made a small project myself to show you what the audio performance normally looks like. My mediocre PC build still costs a little bit more than 600 bucks today and with this budget I went to PC Part Picker to see what I could actually get for the same amount of money. The prices vary over time, but I'll link to each part in the description below. Alternatively, you could also go to PC Part Picker yourself. I created three different builds. One is based on the Intel Core i5-9600K. The second one is based on the AMD Ryzen 5 2600X. And the third one is based on its successor, the AMD Ryzen 5 3600X. Besides CPU, motherboard and graphics card, all three builds include the same components. I compared my current build 
to the Intel build I created on PC Park Pico with the help of user benchmark. And as you can see, the prices here differ a little bit from the prices on PC Park Picker. But the important factor here is performance and performance wise, the Intel build I created with PC Park Picker is a lot better than mine. Since you've already seen what my PC is capable of, I bet this workstation is easily capable of handling large projects with multiple tracks, multiple VST instruments and plugins. A cheaper option would be the build around the AMD Ryzen 5 2600X. Although in comparison to the Intel Core i5, it is a little bit weaker, the overall build has one workstation percentage point more than the Intel build. So if you are on a tight budget, you could also consider this AMD build. The third alternative with the AMD Ryzen 5 3600X is the most expensive build in this video, but it also has the highest workstation rating of the three with 83%. If you want to spend more money on your computer, I would suggest getting a better CPU first. I would also get faster memory. The 3200 MHz version of the memory I used in these builds is not that much more expensive. Last but not least, I would obviously get more SSD storage. I'm not a computer professional, but I know for a fact that some of you guys are. So let me know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts on these three builds? What would you recommend? And what does your PC build look like? As always, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be informed whenever I upload a new video. With that being said, see you in the next one. And until then, have an absolutely awesome day.